So welcome to today's podcast. Thanks for joining me today. I'm solo today, and here we are as I'm recording this. We're in the dead of summer of 2023, and it's amazing how quickly it goes by, especially when kids are getting older, they're they're getting so active, and you got more adult things that they're starting to consider in life, whether it's college, and, and my son started playing uh, sports, and it really brought me back to my childhood days. I mean, those were tremendous days. It's it's crazy. It's been over you know almost 30 years since then, but it, it does fly by, but you appreciate, you know, you, you kind of appreciate the time with family. And unfortunately, the summers do go pretty, pretty quickly, but it, it's uh, been a, a fun experience so far this summer. But one of the things that really struck me this year, especially as my son started playing sports, more organized sports, and he loves it. It's, he's kind of a chip off the old block, if you will. I, you know, I always played sports growing up and I found them just uh, a tremendous sort of tool to to teach a lot of things. And, you know, in, in terms of my memories of childhood and, and playing sports, a lot of it was centered around teams, being able to organize teams and, and work with others and try to draw off of each other's strengths and, and create a, an outcome that was better than the, the individuals can do themselves, right? The team environment. And you know, as we're growing up, especially as it relates to school, uh, the team aspect, yeah, there are some times where that gets uh, uh, encouraged, but a lot of what we are taught growing up is to excel and compete against each other and not collaborate and not work as a team because we have to have better grades, we have better uh, test scores than the other person to get into the elite colleges and it kind of perpetuates this, this uh, desire to to kind of stand out on your own, right? And and basically um, not collaborate. And the idea of cheating, when someone's cheating, that actually gets penalized in the real world. That That is really not what happens. And you really need to, to work with others and sometimes appreciate we're all unique. And so, I mean, I remember growing up and it was always, uh, I was always hard on myself and it was always, I'm supposed to be able to learn all these things. And and you really step back and realize that, you know, we're all such unique animals and we have different strengths and personalities and, and things that really make us unique, which is the awesome part, right? That we are unique in our own self. The analogy of the fingerprints will, you know, our DNA, we're all so unique. And I got to appreciate that, especially if I look at my kids, they, they are, they're unique animals and they're trying to, you know, pave their own path and discover themselves and work amongst the, the rest of the, uh, people around them to do great things. And, you know, we could easily get trapped in this sort of uh, group think and, and try to, you know, stay with the herd, which is, you know, a safe place. And, and that comes in all sh shapes and sizes and different you know, subject areas, especially around finance. And, and finance can be a scary topic to begin with. And, and, and clearly we all know that it's not taught anywhere, certainly in education realms. And, and, and frankly, maybe they, they shouldn't. And this is where it becomes for us as parents to really play that role and give them exposure so they can learn for themselves. And, you know, that's that's why it's so important to, to, to take a team based uh, environment and team based sort of attitude towards things, because um, we only know so much and it's really difficult to be able, you know, able to know it all. And so we're, we're left with a lot of different gaps and. And that's why even in my own practice, I kind of migrated away a little bit to to have a more team based environment. Now, when you think about, you know, you know, some of the wealthier families who have you know, continue to have success generation after generation, one may come to mind is the Rockefeller family. And they had you know, came up with this concept of a family office where you have all these different types of professionals, whether it be investment, insurance, legal, all these folks that are working on your behalf. Now, we all don't have the ability to have that, right, to be able to hire people to work on us as a team um, and dedicate their lives to our well-being. Well, we can still create that environment in some shape or form. And that's that's really what in, in my practice of perennial pride we started doing to be able to provide that level of collaboration amongst key professionals and who have unique expertises. And, and this is where we send it around, you know, five big bucket areas. And, and it may not apply for everyone, but for the most part, you know, we touch, we all touch this in some shape or form. And so the first part is taxes, right? We have, there's, I saw, I heard a quote somewhere, there was uh, 
almost nearly 100 types of taxes we, we are going to come across in our lives. You know, we most, most people sort of equate to their, their, uh, their income taxes, whether federal, state, and some states don't have it, property taxes. But you, you can imagine there's so many taxes that we may come across in our lives that does erode our wealth. And so to keep more of that requires not just some basic planning, but some advanced tax planning. And so that's what you know we've also incorporated into our practice here to help uh, shed light on different and unique ways to, to leverage the existing tax laws legally to uh, reduce the tax bill. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? There's a lot of legal ways and and we've talked about this in all types of different episodes around the incentives that the government is trying to place on us as individuals and families and businesses to, to do things to spur the economy. So they, they push us to uh, incent us to do certain things. So that's one area. The second thing is, is risk mitigation. Now, we, we think about uh, risk. There's a lot of risk to us in growing our wealth and building it over time, whether it's a uh, potentially death, disability, lawsuits, you name it. There's a whole host of risks. And if you are a business owner, they get even uh, bigger in terms of the risk of, of uh, lawsuits and other things that are happening. So risk mitigation is a huge aspect in, of our financial lives and our ability to build wealth. Because as we know, and we've seen in the, in the recent past here, a lot of things can happen that we never expect to happen. So this is where it, becomes important to get um, some some uh, active planning to figure out what are those things that we're protecting against are we and I'm a big believer in, in max protecting so we can avoid that problem of things that could happen that we can't control and so being prepared just like anything else is so key so that when any of those unforeseen things happen that we are adequately prepared with liquidity to insurances so that we can still continue to move forward with our lives and our businesses as needed and, and desired, frankly. And so those are really key to, to really dig deep. And, and there's a lot of risk that people are just rolling the dice and hoping they don't occur and then um, may suffer the consequences um, and, and massively impact their wealth building for now and for future generations. Now, third one, obviously wealth building, we have to, to invest our dollars. We can't just let sit uh, idle in, say, bank accounts. We have to grow, especially when you think about all the inflation that's going on, and and that's always that's being created. And so, wealth building in a whole host of ways, from you know um, uh, investments in stocks and bonds, and real estate, and our own businesses, and most importantly, is investing in our own personal development and our us as assets. So, there's a whole host of areas that people could get into that uh, center around investing. Unfortunately, what is typically shared and to most folks is you have to invest in the stock market. That's where everyone should is naturally drawn to to go to first. And it's just the, the so much uh, information and push by Wall Street and, and financial institutions to drive that. And so that's where everyone for, for the, the masses are been taught. That's where you have to invest. That's where you put most of your money. I would argue that is probably one of the the later stages of what you're doing to invest in. I'd rather you invest in things that you can own, control, you have some um, direction, you understand it better. And so I think overall it, it hits on the other thing, it reduces risk. And so this is where we broaden our, uh, we can help broaden uh, your horizons and, and others to see that there's plenty of other places to invest and likely in, uh, could be less risky and even have tax benefits to them. So definitely a big area in the practice. The other area is legal. Now, legal comes in all shapes and sizes to entity structure, creating en entities, asset protection uh, for your businesses, certainly estate planning. And for those who are um, uh, have, have had some success financially, state taxes can be a big problem in terms of future sort of transfer of wealth. And we're going to see a lot of that as a lot of the baby boomers move into retirement, move on. We're going to have a lot of wealth being transferred. And if you're not careful and don't plan for it, same as risk. There's a lot of uh, taxes that could be eroded away and passed on and all the wealth that people have built up over time basically could be sort of shifted over to the government uh, in terms of, of taxation. And I assume most people would rather have that go to charities or their families or something that provide more value. Um, but those are all the advanced areas of, of legal that we 
can help uh, bring to the table. And then lastly, business advisory, where for private businesses that are growing the Main Street area of the economy, um, they need uh, help with growing their business and supporting their business for growth and potentially sale of their businesses. So this is the area that we can help provide uh, business advisory support to uh, when needed. So those are kind of the core areas that make up the virtual family office and can be a, a huge benefit to those looking to expand and review what they're doing in their financial lives. And this is where we use a team-based environment to help not just pass referrals and, and pass you over the fence and then you get help, but we work collaboratively across the board because most uh, financial decisions could have a tax implication or create different levels of risk or have some legal issue. And so they're all sort of very connected. And that's why having a collaborative team is so key to maximizing everything that you're doing. I came across this interesting article, too, that talked about teamwork and collaboration in general. And this is kind of more of a broader issue, but it's it's really uh, centered around being able to help solve problems better. Right. There's three key areas. There's more um, that certainly it provides, but one of the big areas is is helping problem solve. You know, we could easily get trapped in our own um, experiences and in our biases, and having a, a team to kind of look at, to collaborate, bounce ideas, test each other's thoughts and perspectives really will enhance the, the solutions that come out of it so you can see it from different angles. Even some of the, you know, the one of the brilliant minds in our history, Albert Einstein gets credit for you know, discovering things, but he obviously knew that he was, uh, a lot of what he developed came from conversations, discussions and connections with others and his community, his friends and colleagues to, um, to really use a team-based method to solve these issues. And the second thing is that teamwork allows for smarter risk-taking because again, when you have siloed nature of a lot of financial world, um, you know, it can be uh, because it's, 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 it's discussing one particular area, you may miss all the other impacts things have on, on, on tax or risk or, or even in, in, in the uh, investment return. So I think it's really important to uh, have a team together to be able to assess the broader risk of it. You know, you might be hesitant uh, sometimes um, to just take one path because um, you're out there solo on the island. But when you have a team environment that helps, uh, that you can ensure that was looking at it from different angles, it will hopefully reduce the risk that someone takes and make sure that they understand the full breadth of what they might be getting into on a uh, unique strategy or investment, et cetera. So they can really take a, a broader lens of, of mitigating some of the risk and give you so much more information about it so that you can become educated and, and give you all of the information you want to, to make the right decisions for you, your family, your business. And lastly, I think teamwork really helps to expand creativity. You know, we only can come across certain things. We all, you know, when I, I get humbled all the time that there's only so much I know in this world and, and there's way more that I don't know than I do know. And that's why having a team based model that we're using here, this virtual family office is really helpful to expand the reach of opportunities and it increases the creativity because there's so much more that we can do with our wealth. But we, if we, you know, what we're hearing most of the time is a very cookie cutter basic approach of what we're supposed to do. And so this is why having teams together to help um, introduce new ideas, discuss them and make sure that they're, you know, can solve some bigger, important needs. And this is where, you know, a team based model can really shine and introduce new concepts and ideas that uh, just weren't there before because we can stay in our, our lanes and and uh, not innovate and get creative. So. I hope this was helpful to kind of shed some light on the importance of, of a team and collaboration, whether it's in your work, your business, but certainly in managing your own financial lives. You know, we are in this to, to kind of examine all the different facets of your financial lives. So if, if you certainly want to uh, reach out to, to discuss your situation or your, even your practice, business, whatever, more than happy to uh, have an introductory conversation, see if this might help you at all. Always looking forward to, to meeting open-minded people who are, are looking to expand what they're doing so they can achieve an impact way more than even thought possible on this earth. And, and so this is why Cranial Pride exists and really love working with people who are, 
who are uh, trying to, to do wonderful and great things for themselves and their families and in our communities. So uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the Cranial Pride Podcast. And I always appreciate your time and attention and listening to these things. And hopefully it's helpful. Take care. Thanks for joining me on this episode today. I really am grateful for you as listeners to the Cranial Pride Podcast. I hope you're getting some tremendous value out of it and hopefully pushing you along your journey to financial freedom. You know, I put this podcast together really to help sort of help you get more educated around your finances so that you feel empowered to live the life that you really want. And if you like the content that you heard today or watched, then I would encourage you to go to my website, perennialpride.com. There's tons of other content there and you can access my book, Wealth Beyond the Numbers. You can buy it there on my website. It's a aggregation of a lot of great tips and tools I've learned to not only build my wealth in my, my accounts, but build wealth in my life and abundance and joy and something that has a lot of my experiences and the journey that I've been on personally. Hopefully that can be also of value to you as you sort of move forward. So thanks again for being a Cranial Pride listener and we'll see you on the next episode.